Hello and welcome to a new lab update. Um, so today I am going to make some experiments concerning the charging function of our Gen 2 Prius inverter. Um, actually it should be pretty easy to charge a battery from the Prius inverter because we kind of have a three-phase rectifier if we feed in three phase here because the diodes in the mg1 power stage act as a rectifier and if we just uh, connect uh, power and neutral to one of the two phases um, we have a one phase or two phase rectifier so what will happen is that on this dc bus right here we will have rectified ac so if we connect 230 ac here we will have 320 dc here Next up is our buck boost converter, which has a, an, a large inductor right here and also has a switching device hidden under there. And um, when I say buck boost, uh, it's what is um, technically called a synchronous converter. So seen from this side, it is a boost converter. So we can step up the voltage that is fed in here to an arbitrary high voltage on the DC bus. And seen from the DC bus, uh, we can step down a high voltage to an arbitrary low voltage on this side. So it's bidirectional. Well, that seems uh, all very simple. Uh, the problem is a synchronous rectifier consists of two uh, switches and if you want to use it as a boost converter you would only be operating the low side switch and then you'd have unidirectional current flow and all is good and on the other side if you want to uh, use it as a buck converter you would only operate the high side switch in the previous inverter so, though though you will always be operating both switches. There's just one control signal and if you pull it one way, <laughs> I keep forgetting which way, uh, the low side will be on and if you pull it the other way, the high side will be on. There is no uh, way to turn both off or to turn only one on. And that's a bit of a challenge as we will see now. So I'll put the camera here and show you the first issue. So I've shorted out the DC input here and that kind of simulates um, a voltage difference between the DC input and the AC input. Good, so now let's uh, assume this were our AC, well actually it's DC from this power supply. Let's connect it to two of the phases. Oh no, it is shorted out. So. If we were connect real AC here, we would have just blown a fuse. Um, let's look at this the other way around. If we do this, turn it around, and just assume this to be our battery. Positive here, negative here, all is good, but that's because nothing is plugged in. Now, on this logic board here, I have installed a resistor. It doesn't really belong in this board, but it's just how I did it for now. Uh, that pulls up um, the control signal. And I think pulling it up will actually activate the low side switch. So, as soon as we plug this in, oh no, we are back to a short. Hmm. So, whichever way we do it, whether we yeah, keep the signal low or put it high, on one of the sides we will run into a short. Let's look if we can solve this. 
Okay, this was quicker than I thought because um, I had found a converter shutdown signal earlier and I've just brought it out on this pin and I have now connected it uh, permanently to 12 volts and so I've connected the power supply back to the well, back here basically just with a shorter wire um, and we're good we're not short circuited so as soon as we pull it out back to short circuit pull it back no short circuit okay here's where we're at so I have connected an actual 12 volt battery to the DC input and uh, I've used the Damien method of a load resistor to not uh, short anything out. So right now the shutdown input is connected to 12 volts and as soon as I pull it, bam, DC input is shorted. Now. Let's put it back on there. And I will now start the charge mode. Okay. And now let's pull it. Aha. Uh -huh. So it went on for a short while. And now it's off. Hmm. That's not so bad. So if we start the charge mode and then cut the shutdown pin, we're in a much better situation than before. Well, let's keep going. Okay, so here is more progress. I have rigged up my laptop here and I'm showing to you UDC, so the, basically the voltage across these two rails. Um, on the red plot, so right now it's hovering around 21 volts, which is coincidentally the voltage I have set on my power supply. And then here, currently not, oh, sorry about this screen, crappy screen capture here. Um, not currently updated is the amplitude at which uh, the the synchronous RGBTs are currently driven it. So, let's start the charge mode and then pull the shutdown. So, charge mode running, we can see the amplitude and I've removed the shutdown pin and now we can see something very interesting because the voltage shot up to about 95 volts because it was boosting the 12 volts from here to well 90 volts because that's what um, basically what you told us to do. Now we can see the the PI controller ramping up to reach the 2 amp set point that I have configured. And now it seems to have hit that set point. Let's take a look and I will um, say th something more about it. So I have configured a two amp charge current and that is charge input current into the terminals here. But we only see 0.8 amps. So why is that? Well, if we look here, let's stop the plot. The inverter detects um, 1.5 amps and that's because the current sensors on this side have twice the gain of the current sensors on this side. But I have configured uh, the current sensors on this side, so we always see double the actual value. Good. So in other words, if I were to configure a charge current of say 5 amps, Yeah, I always keep searching forever. Five amps. We should see the current rise to about 2.5. Well, 
within the limit of the accuracy. And we also see that the charge current has risen by this lamp now glowing. Good, so now comes uh, the last thing and that is stopping the charging progress. Or maybe let's just play around a bit. Um, let's increase the voltage. And the current should stay unchanged. Well, line regulation seems to take a while. Now, how do we stop the charging process? Um, well, easiest thing would be to just pull the power and it will stop clocking anything. And I think that, that will stop the charging process. And in practice, that's probably what you're going to do. But let's see what happens <laughs> if we hit the stop button right here. Oops, back to short circuit. Okay, so that's pretty obvious. Uh, the control signal is no longer no longer being generated. So um, the bottom IGBT is full on. So before we hit stop, we have to make sure that our shutdown signal is back to 12 volts. Let's just simulate that again. Go back to start. Pull it. All good. Ramping up the charge current. Also good. And now we want to stop. And actually we have already stopped the charging process by just connecting the shutdown signal. And now if we want, we can hit stop here. And nothing happens. Good. So, I'd say um, bug charging is kind of figured out. And it's now merely a question of who controls this shutdown signal. We might be able to kind of reroute the DC switch uh, signal that we generate here. <laughs> Excuse me. Jesus. Um, to to uh, yeah to control the the shutdown signal basically, um, or you might have to deploy some some external logic to do that. that. Um, one thing I might be trying right now is also boost mode charging, and boost mode would mean uh, we feed a low voltage into here, and we use the booster converter. And we expect a high voltage to spawn between our ground and actually any of the AC outputs right here. Let's try that. Okay, back to the lab. So, um, I did not test boost mode today because it turns out um, yeah, to have voltage exit, exit the uh, phase terminals, uh, you would actually have to activate the apparent IGBTs. Um, yeah, so I will try that uh, later. And I do want to broadcast uh, yeah, today's footage. So um, yeah, I will get uh, back to you about that later. Good. Uh, as always, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.